continuing on with these trees. Put one in there. Maybe that one's been trodden on. <laughs> it's a bit crook. Nah, you can actually make it a bit... If you don't get it how you want it, you can just make it a bit bigger. Don't worry about that. No stress. If you're not happy with it, just make it a tiny bit bigger. Maybe a bit more careful on this one. That's better. I want to leave a little gap here so that you can see a bit more of that mountain. So I'll just... I don't want to kill all this lovely ridge you see that I did. Keep reloading it regular so it keeps its colour. Otherwise it'll just mix with your liquid white and go really light in colour tone. You need to reload all the time. A little bit of mist just showing underneath that. And then we'll make that look like a little bush just there. Now what you can do as well same colour, identical same colour. I'm just going to come up behind here and I'm just going to pull down just like so. Create some distant evergreen trees just in there. I know I'm going to cover some of these mountains up you see but I don't want to cover them all. Just by pulling down, you load the brush to a chiselled edge, like so, both sides, so you got it sharp, good and sharp, and then you just come in here and you just pull down, straight down. This is truly the joy of painting, it really is. I'm so glad that Bob Ross brought me to this technique. I really am. He absolutely rocked my world when I first seen what he was doing. I thought, whoa, what can I do with this now? Now he's taught me how to use it and how to do these techniques. What can I do? So straight away I set off out, painting out local areas where I live, Stuff like that, and just learning how to use the technique for place where I live. And that's that's the key. Bob Ross always used to teach people: paint what you see, get out there in nature, appreciate it. Don't just paint from other people's paintings. You know, use what you learn here, and then take it out and paint your own areas. Oh, I get photo. It's good to get photographs sometimes of these places. And then you can use them as a reference, go back to your studio or wherever, paint them in the comfort of your own home. But I think nature, when you're painting from nature, it gives you everything that you need to make the painting look real. Everything. And you want to get that vibe, don't you? You want to get the vibe that you're actually there, you know? Just highlight some of them, uh, make them a bit darker. Make a few brighter and a few darker. You'll find that that will really benefit you. 
tap one in that's a bit like in front there. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, it's getting there. Let's check the camera. We're doing okay. Right, just up in here. Few little indications you can just tap like so, and then make all these little evergreen trees. If your brush gets too overloaded with paint, you can just scrape it sometimes like so on the side. See that? And that takes out the excess paint that's in there, pick that up, put it back in your pile again. Because it's easy to get too much paint in your brush and then it won't work. Tap on there. Some of that good dark colour in. Silent contemplation then. Did you hear it? <laughs> yeah, I've been watching this video over and over again, uh, the first part of it anyway, what I can watch, so that I can get a good feel for the place, you know? And I just can't stop to be amazed by this guy and what he's achieved. He built his own lock, he built his own uh, chairs, tables. <laughs> shells, everything. Those of you who have seen it will know exactly what I mean. Unbelievably strong. He's such a small man. He had the right pair of muscles on him. And his accent, whoa! <laughs> that mental accent that he's got is brilliant.